Hey everyone, I'm super excited today because I'm speaking to Stephanie Spencer. She is a registered nurse of 27 years and she's going to come on and tell us why oil free because I know a lot of you had questions about it and um, I actually saw her live and she did a really good presentation but I only saw like five minutes of it so now I'm asking her to come on and um, present to us the whole presentation. Yay! Stephanie's here! View request. Go live. All right, so Stephanie and I are both part of the Vegan Health Bundle, um, and the bundle is hey. all oil free. Hey, hi Stephanie. Hi. Thank you so much. Hello, hello. Us. So glad to be here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can all right. hear you fine. And um, um, yeah, it's great to meet you. I saw your um, live on chef aj show previously and, and uh -huh. i remember yeah i remember your life i i like i said i sent it to my mom as well because my mom's pre-diabetic but yes. i know it's hard to convince her but yes um so i was just telling people that um so we're both part of the vegan health bundle that mm -hmm. is happening right now and it's only going to be around for like one day left. one more day and, yeah and and you guys can get um you know stephanie's course my courses and uh, like about 150 courses on vegan health uh, for only 49 US dollars. You can get it in either one of our links. And um, I was um, very determined to get Stephanie on my live <laughs> because um, I saw your live with Sarah of Better Food Guru. She mm -hmm. has an excellent oil-free recipe ebook in the bundle. I'm also very excited about that. I, I just, I made her a recipe actually because I've been following Sarah for some time and yeah. Um, yeah, and I used to have to convert her dressings to, you know, her salad recipes to um, oil-free, but now I don't need to because she has um, created one for the bundle. And yeah. Um, yeah, I caught your life for a few minutes and then I thought like, wow, this is really good, but it was way past my bedtime. It was like one hour past my bedtime. Oh, sure. So, yeah, I, so I thought like, oh, I'll just watch the replay the next day. And then to my disappointment, that was, that was like, right. Oh that was right when, when Facebook and Instagram like went down worldwide for two hours was right when we finished and it didn't upload. Yeah, so 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 I hunted you down <laughs> yeah. and messaged you like two, three times saying like, can you come on? Can you come on? And you said yes. Right. So here you are. Um, and yeah, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm happy to be here. So I'm Stephanie Spencer. Um, I've been a cardiac nurse for 27 years. I used to run uh, an outpatient heart failure clinic, and all of my patients were really, really sick. I mean, some of them I followed for like 10 years. And... Um, yeah, so uh, most of my patients were diabetic. In fact, like I would say 95% of them, like everyone's diabetic. Everyone's already had a heart attack. I mean, so what I've done my whole life is work with people that are suffering from these chronic diseases. And I didn't know anything about plant-based nutrition <laughs> until five years ago. And uh, basically my husband developed diabetes. And at that point I freaked out and uh, I had seen the documentary, What the Health, uh, that showed that diabetes is reversible with a plant-based diet. So I told Paul, like, we're switching to a plant-based diet. And we immediately, we both, lost 20 pounds we reversed his diabetes within like three months and so then i just fell down the rabbit hole learned all about it um, and i ended up getting a um, board certification in lifestyle medicine and so what i do now is just teach courses in chronic disease reversal and so chronic disease is diseases that are caused by food and i don't know if it's what it's like in malaysia but here in the U.S. and in the southern part of the U.S. where I am, people are very obese, very sick from all eating hyper-processed, way too much fat, too much, too many animal products, but just god awful food. And um, so, yeah, it, it. I have never seen people turn around in the regular medical field the way I see them respond to plant-based nutrition. And so, so yeah, I created a whole um, online course. Uh, I address where do you get your protein and in the bundle you will get my where do you get your protein course um, because I feel that people don't 
under like can't get started until they really understand that you can get all your protein. Yeah. So I spend two hours explaining that. Then class two is type two diabetes. Uh, class three is uh, heart disease, and class four is. Uh, weight loss. But in the bundle, I have class one and class three. I have where do you get your protein and I have the heart disease course. Mm -hmm. So um, it is, it's really a lot of uh, good information, but I'm going to jump into why no oil really quick. So um, first of all, oil is not a whole food. It's an extracted food. Like we get the olive and we squeeze it and what comes yeah. out is the oil, but what's left behind is the fiber and all of the phytonutrients, the plant chemicals, um, the antioxidants, all the good stuff is bound up within the fiber. And we lose that when we squeeze the oil out. However, if you are like 23 years old and have zero health problems and you're eating primarily plants and getting lots of fiber, you know, a little bit of oil is probably not going to hurt you that much. You know, like we can see from the blue zones and from a lot of population studies that um, populations that eat in that manner do just fine and live for a long time. However, in the United States for sure, I mean, by the time we get to be 60, half of the population is diabetic or pre-diabetic. Um, I mean, heart disease is just widespread. Every 40 seconds, someone has a heart attack. If you are middle-aged and you have excess weight, you have pre-diabetes or diabetes, you have high blood pressure, you have heart disease, what they'll typically tell you to do here, like in an, in an American hospital, is they'll tell the patients after their heart attack to switch to chicken and salmon mm. and, and mm. have all the yeah. oil you want, okay? That does not help you. That's not going to make you heart attack proof. Uh, yeah. That's never going to reverse your diabetes. We never prescribe a diet that helps anything. So, um, but if you switch in, so in the American College of Lifestyle Medicine and, you know, like we have curated a bunch of research that really strongly demonstrates that we can flat out reverse these diseases if we switch to a strict enough diet, which mm -hmm. is all whole food, plant-based, no oil. If you switch to a vegan diet that has a lot of processed foods, a lot of coconut oil, you will not reverse your diabetes. I have um, students that, like sometimes I find that the people that are hardest to really make progress are lifelong vegans or people that have been vegan for 20 years that are used to eating the processed vegan food. And they're used yeah. to eating fake uh, sour cream, fake cheese, fake meat. And they just can't let that go. And in their head, they're like, but it's, I call it, but it's vegan food. Okay. Yes. And it like when I converted over, like I always, I, what, when I was younger, I would never have considered being vegan because I hate fake food. I associated veganism with fake food. And, um, but once like I understood like that whole food plant-based is different. And then my husband had diabetes like we just switched right over. Like, I think I've had one bite of fake cheese and fake meat and I hated it. Like I have, I never eat fake vegan food because I'm kind of a food purist. Even before I was plant-based, I was a <laughs> omnivore food purist. Like everything mm -hmm. had to be perfect and like real maple syrup and stuff. And like, then when I switched to plant-based, I don't eat any processed vegan food. I hate that stuff. And so um, people will do really well if you go from a standard American diet to a whole food, plant-based, unprocessed diet. So um, without the oil, but that's the defining factor. You have to omit the oil to make progress on your diabetes. So let me explain real quick about the diabetes. Oh no. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I've done this presentation so many times. Okay. <laughs> I got to get my colanders all lined up correctly. Okay, so let's talk about healthy glucose metabolism, okay? So uh, when you eat food, it turns into sugar, basically, or glucose. This is our body's fuel, is glucose. And um, this is going to represent, this sieve is going to represent a healthy muscle cell, okay? okay. And it's permeable, right? So we're going to eat our food. We've got sugar going through our bloodstream. This spoon represents insulin, okay? Insulin acts as an escort to escort the sugar from the bloodstream 
into the cell, okay? So it's gonna go into the cell and you can see the sugar is going right through that cell wall mm -hmm. because the cell is insulin sensitive. It's, it's permeable. Things can go through the cell wall. Okay, perfect. This is a healthy cell. What happens in a diabetic person? Um, so we developed, or someone developed, it wasn't me, uh, a new technology called MR spectroscopy. I think it was like around 2006. And once we had that technology, we were able to see inside the muscle cells of diabetics, like on a microscopic level. And what we found is that the diabetics had fat buildup on their muscle cell walls. Ugh. You know what? I'm going to have to tilt this down because I don't have, hold on. This, this demonstration involves hot water, and I'm afraid I'm uh. going to burn myself if I don't get this low enough. Okay. So anyway, so there was fat buildup on the muscle cell walls of diabetics. And so when you have type 2 diabetes and you're eating your food, and here's the glucose that comes through your bloodstream, the insulin is trying to escort this glucose to the muscle cell because that's the fuel that we run on. We require glucose going from our blood into our cells so that we can exercise, so that we can remember our grocery list. Everything requires glucose. So here comes the glucose. Oh, guess what? It can't make it through that cell because the, mm. the fat on the wall of the cell is resisting the insulin, right? Mm -hmm. So the glucose and the insulin can't get through. And so glucose and insulin are building up into higher and higher levels in the bloodstream. And that's what diabetes is. So when you have high levels of glucose all the time in your bloodstream, you're gonna be, uh, have excess hunger, you're gonna be very thirsty, you're gonna be urinating a lot, then you're gonna go to the doctor, they're gonna draw your blood and they're gonna tell you you're diabetic, okay? Mm -hmm. So Dr. Neil Bernard, who is a famous uh, plant-based physician, had a theory that you could uh, reverse diabetes uh, with a whole food plant-based diet. And so he, with a grant from the National Institutes of Health, he did a study and compared uh, diabetic patients. He put uh, half of them on a whole food plant-based uh, no to, like he actually said minimal oil, very low oil, low fat diet. And the other group uh, did the regular um, American Diabetic Association diet, which is a kind of like a lower carb, like balance your carbs, count your carbs diet, okay? But you, but on the American Diabetic Association diet, you can eat all the turkey wraps and chicken and salmon and whatever that you want. Um, so the, um, the plant-based group had a three times lower blood sugars than those in the American Diabetic Association group, than the standard uh, diet that we recommend. So a plant-based diet was demonstrated to be three times more effective than the usual diet that we recommend, than the low carb and avoid sugar diet. And not that we're saying to like eat sugar and sugar is great, but sugar is not the cause of diabetes. Mm. Sugar is, excess sugar in your blood is a symptom of diabetes, which is insulin resistance caused by fat buildup. And this is one of the most misunderstood concepts in the medical field, okay? Like a lot of medical practitioners don't know this. Patients certainly don't know this. Yeah. So when we switch to a, a low fat, whole food plant-based diet that's naturally low in fat, our bloodstream becomes very low in fat, okay? And diabetes is a disease of fat toxicity. Heart disease is a disease of fat toxicity. If our bloodstream is very low in fat, then all that fat will start to wash away. So we switch to a whole food plant-based diet. Guess ah. what? The fat will just start to melt out of your cells, okay? And it becomes insulin, oh, can you see that? becomes yeah. insulin sensitive again. And you know how long it takes? There were studies done in which um, they got insulin dependent diabetics, switched them to a, a whole, food, whole food plant based diet. They were able to de decrease their insulin requirements by 60% in just 16 days, just a little bit over wow. two weeks. So yeah, we switched to that low fat diet and then guess what? 
our cells are insulin sensitive again and, and the sugar can go right through. So yeah, that is really the most effective way to reverse diabetes. And the reason diabetes is so important is that diabetes is step one before heart disease. Having diabetes just ruins your arteries. And that's why my course is called You're As Old As Your Arteries. Mm -hmm. When you have arterial problems, you're going to have problems with your health overall because your arteries are everywhere. So yeah, mm -hmm. you're going to have, you are at high risk of having heart attacks. You're at risk of having strokes. You're at risk of having kidney problems. Diabetics have a lot of kidney problems. And in fact, the so I'm board certified in lifestyle medicine. The American College of Lifestyle Medicine came up with this... Um, Type 2 Diabetes Patient Bill of Rights. And I'm going to read you a little bit of it. It says, um, whereas type 2 diabetes is one of the top risk factors for heart disease and a leading cause of blindness, amputation, painful neuropathy, and kidney failure leading to dialysis and renal transplantation, whereas most current treatments of type 2 diabetes assume it to be an irreversible chronic illness, which will require ever-increasing levels of medication, whereas many people with type 2 diabetes may be able to reduce or eliminate their medications if they are successfully treated with evidence-based treatment, which is a whole food plant-based diet. It requires some effort on our part, and it's yeah. a little bit more involved than just taking a pill or taking insulin, okay? So then it says, now, therefore, let it be known that you have the right to be fully informed about all treatment options for type 2 diabetes before consenting to treatment. That's just basic medical care is that we inform our patients of all of their treatment options, okay? You have the right to be given accurate, complete, and unbiased information, including about type 2 diabetes reversal, including the benefits of treatment with a predominantly whole food plant-based diet. You have the right to know that certain foods increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes and remaining type 2 diabetic your whole life, including turkey, this is what we eat in America, turkey wraps, chicken, salmon, that's, that's considered healthy here. And we want to eat meat three times a day, by God. So they'll switch from the pork, I don't know, beef sausage to turkey sausage every day. I mean, so yeah, this is kind of the typical diet here. You have the right to work with doctors and healthcare professionals who understand the links between lifestyle choices and type 2 diabetics who are um, equipped with the knowledge and strategies to treat and reverse disease through therapeutic lifestyle changes. Um, and you have the right to know the same diet and lifestyle changes that can prevent, treat, and reverse Type 2 diabetes may do the same for other conditions, including coronary artery disease, obesity, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, arthritis, and even some cancer and autoimmune conditions. So, yeah, that's why it's really important um, because this is widely not known. And then I'll go into real quick about heart disease and then I'll answer questions because I'm sure we're limited on time here. Um, but in regards to heart disease, it's really useful to uh, limit oil because um, there was a study that uh, Dr. Robert Vogel did out of the University of Maryland, I believe it was in 1996, in which he um, tested the um, responsivness of uh, the arteries just by applying a blood pressure cuff to some medical students. Basically, he fed them like sausage biscuits from a fast food restaurant and then checked their uh, how fast that their arterial but how their brachial artery would like spring back after having a blood pressure cuff on it. So he can, he can uh, kind of objectively uh, quantify the responsiveness of the artery. Our arteries should be able to dilate um, as needed, right? And so um, five hours after eating that high fat meal, the artery was unable to fully dilate. So that's how we found that like a high fat, and that's of course like sausage and cheese, that decreases the dilation, the artery's ability to dilate. But he did the same study with olive oil dipped in, or bread dipped in olive oil, and it had the same effect of blunting the artery's ability to dilate, okay? We also know that oil will cause what we call sludge blood. Um, it makes your blood thicker and sludgier. And so it's harder for your heart, for your left ventricle, to squeeze the blood. And so the pressure is going to go higher. You cut out oil, your blood will get thinner. And then the heart's able to pump it more easily and your blood pressure lowers, okay? Um, 
Also, uh, we really recommend to uh, limit saturated fat as much as possible um, for diabetes reversal and heart disease reversal. Saturated fat leads to high cholesterol. Olive oil, it has anywhere from 14 to 17% saturated fat, okay? And so like if you have like a dressing made out of olive oil and you stick it in the fridge, you know how it gets kind of solid a little bit in the refrigerator? Mm. So this is how we know it's got some saturated fat, you know, like not as much as coconut oil, but it's not yeah. saturated fat free. And if we're sick, if we have diabetes, if we have heart disease, like that saturated fat's not doing us any good. Um, and it's also uh, seed oils are high in omega-6, which is a pro-inflammatory fatty acid. Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. And that's why we talk about omega-3 so much, because we don't get enough anti-inflammatory foods in our diet. So um, olive oil has a 16 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So oh. it's got a whole lot of the pro-inflammatory and just a little bit of the anti-inflammatory. We right. ideally want to keep our omega-6 to omega-3 either anywhere from 1 to 1 mm -hmm. to 4 to 1. But olive oil is 16 to 1. So just the brass tacks of it are if and olive oil is nine calories per gram uh fat and car or protein and carbs are four calories per gram so oil is not going to help you if you're trying to lose weight the most effective thing you can do to lose weight is just eliminate oil so yeah basically it's just all of these conditions that tend to make americans really sick oh <laughs> and clog up our i've got to show this off Ooh, since yeah. i bothered to make it Here's my here's my artery with all the plaque in it. And guess what? You get enough plaque, it'll get, I don't know if I have enough light to show you. It'll even get crystals, and that's what causes heart attacks. But um, we want to cut out the food that causes this, which is all animal products. This is a cholesterol plaque, right? But if we can make our bloodstream really low in fat, like almost like water, then it's going to help get rid of those plaques. And so here is a big, uh, there we go. Here's a big um, plaque in our arteries. This is what causes heart attacks, okay? We cut out the cholesterol. That's these little yellow dots. Guess what? The, there's hardly going to be any. Our liver still makes some cholesterol, so we're going to have way less yellow dots. This is an area of concentrated cholesterol. But if we make our blood really low fat, the fat is going to go in from the plaque. It's going to be able to to osmose out into the bloodstream because the, it's going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. It's going to want to just get, go out that way. So it'll start to just leave that plaque. The excess cholesterol will be metabolized by your liver and then go into the toilet. And that's why we want to eat a high fiber diet because the fiber will help soak up that excess cholesterol and soak up that excess fat. So the less fat we have in our diet, the more rapid changes we're going to make in um, diabetes and heart disease and weight loss. Uh, blood pressure can start to come down within two weeks if we do a, a, a serious whole food, plant-based, high fiber, no oil diet. So hit me with your questions. Thank you, thank you so much for that. So um, I'm wondering because, um, oh, so, so many questions. Let's see, when the, the first one is if, do, do you, do you eat out and when you eat out, do you request for no oil or do you just, you know, yeah, what, so what do you do in socials if you I will tell you out? what I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have any chronic disease and I'm happy with my weight. Right. So I do eat at restaurants, okay? okay? But people that um, <laughs> need to reverse diabetes, okay? Like if you are healthy, you can generally tolerate a vegan meal at a restaurant. Like I don't ever order deep fried stuff or anything, yeah. but you know, like I will get like a bean burger maybe, or, mm -hmm. um, or I'll get like a, a burrito bowl, you know, and like they, they might have a yeah. little bit of oil cause they toss the rice in or whatever. Yeah. But what you can do is um, if you are working on diabetes reversal, heart disease reversal, oh, I wish I had it with me. We, w we went out for dinner tonight with my um, dad 
mm-hmm. who um, has some heart issues. And uh, I, so I got him all these, I got them off of Amazon, but they're these little tiny dressing containers and mm-hmm. you can bring your own no oil dressing. It just fits in your purse. And then you can order any salad anywhere that doesn't have, you know, animal products on it. So you can get any salad, you put that dressing on. Um, you can go like, like at a Mexican restaurant. That's like in where we live. That's kind of your easiest bet. Like you yeah. can get fajitas. I don't know if y'all have stuff like that in Malaysia. I mean, like your food is probably we you do. do. Okay. Fajitas, but so you can get fajitas, um, veggie fajitas, but you have yeah. to tell them no oil. Sin aciete in Espanol. Right. But um, yeah, just tell them to make it without oil. If you forget, it's going to come swimming in oil. But um, you get that, um, get it with a corn tortilla. You can't eat the chips. The chips are deep fried. Right. Um, you know, like you just have to kind of do your research. Um, but it it is, it is not easy. Uh, a baked yeah. potato is usually an option. Like you might have to be careful about the skin. They might have rubbed oil on the outside, but you yeah. can eat the inside and then you can get a <laughs> salad and you can bring your own dressing. Um, we have Whole Foods Market. Um, mm. I don't know if you have, it's like a chain yeah. of like I've been healthy to the foods. US, like for sure. Times, so I know what okay, okay. Is but Trader Whole Joe's Foods and, yeah. has a big um, salad bar uh, and they actually have no oil dressing there. Right. They have like a no oil balsamic vinaigrette. And um, so you can get the salad bar. Um, But yeah, I mean, I will admit it's tricky eating out. And so you just like need to figure out like maybe a couple places that you can eat at or maybe maybe some like salad option with a baked potato and bring your own dressing from home. And um, that's usually the best, our best, uh, vegan sushi. That's what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. I think (laughs) that's. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's interesting because um, last year when I presented at Veg Fest, I was the only cooking demo presenter that did not use oil. Yeah. And this um, gentleman came up to me and said, like, you know, he was very happy to see it because he's he was one of the very few Malaysian vegans who are like um, oil free. Right. And then he said right. that he went to every single food store to talk about the whole oil oil free thing yeah. and ask them whether they use any oil and only the vegetarian and vegan sushi stall did not use oil. Right. Every yeah. other food vendor well, did. There, then- <laughs> I mean, truly, I mean, to be fair, I don't think there's a single culture on earth that, or a single ethnic group that, that just has never uses oil. Like everyone does use yeah. oil. The That's only right. so people that difficult. don't use oil are people that have realized that it's, it's not good for their health. And so then they try to learn different things. But yeah, like in, in the wild, you will never see a scenario where there's like a restaurant or something that cooks without oil. That just does not exist. But you can certainly do it. I mean, my dream is to like someday open up a restaurant with no oil food for people and just have like doctors send patients there but um but yeah i mean like it's not hard to do at home and and that's what the Mm bundle that is why the entire bundle is no oil if you have any health issues if you are overweight 70 percent of the american public is overweight or obese okay so like when we do this whole food plant-based no oil and the whole bundle's no oil this is a bundle that is appropriate for the majority of the population of the United States, right? If, if they only can get this information and get this education, you know? So yeah. it is really appropriate. Um, you know, like there certainly are some instances like people with zero health problems and the young and whatever, like, you know, in rural China, um, I know there's like, like China isn't, you know, oil free or anything, no, but they yeah. have like in areas where they don't eat very much meat. They, there's mm. some counties in China where there's no recorded cases of heart disease before the mm. age of 65, right? Which is, that would be unheard of here. You know, um, Costa Rica, you know, like the blue zones, they probably use oil, but from the day they were born <laughs> until they're 98, they just happen to live in an area that was not um, industrialized and they don't have mm. Walmarts and, you know, like, but, in America, there is no place like that. You know, there's not a single place in our country that doesn't have processed food. And for the most part, humans will simply eat whatever food is in their environment, whether it's good food or bad food. It's only through 
directed education and using quite a bit of willpower and like a lot of effort that people will eat differently. But as soon as you start eating differently, your health will transform. And the reason we don't tolerate oil really is because we evolved over like 25 million years as, you know, great apes uh, for the majority of our evolutionary history with like, we are just eating basically fruits and plants, like 95% plants. And then we, we've been walking upright for about 200,000 years. But still, even though we were hunter-gatherers and we did eat meat, it's still very low fat. Like wild game is 15% fat, and we ate majority plants. So yeah. our whole evolutionary history, we have eaten a low-fat diet in which like cholesterol and sodium was hard to come by. And so our bodies want to hold on to cholesterol. And our bodies evolve over the space of like 250,000 years. But our food system has changed drastically just in the last like... 60 to 70 years, you know, and in the United States, certainly it's just all run by mega farms. Everything comes from one place. Yeah. The, all the bad food is subsidized by the government yeah. and is super Same. cheap and the yeah. good food is expensive. I mean, it's just awful. And so our bodies still think we're going to have a famine. Our bodies are still trying to hold on to the fat for us and like mm -hmm. do us a favor, you know, and we just, our body does not know what to do with all of this crap food, calorie rich and processed food. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Any I other questions? I don't want to keep talking continually. No, no, this is great. <laughs> I think I, I, this, this is so close to my heart. You know why? Because um, my dad died in when he was like 67 years old, um, totally suddenly. Um, and it was because of a heart attack. And, um, and I mean, yeah. So it, Mm -hmm. I, and and he was running like um marathons and all that so yeah. we never thought that he we thought yep. he was fit but i mean the the back story is um i think mean, he we used to live well he used to live quite a bit of an unhealthy life and then at 40 the doctors told him like okay you need to stop drinking you need to stop smoking you need to mm -hmm. eat better because if not you know you're going to die so we mm -hmm. thought we became healthier right so we switched yeah. to brown rice you know mm -hmm. we like you mm -hmm. say, you know, we, we eat salmon because we... You were doing the chicken good. salmon diet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. then, I mean, but he did a lot of juices as well and oh, you know, yeah. sprouting. Yeah. But just, we, we never, like, we never became vegan. We never thought that, yeah, we cut down on beef. Well, yeah, you're right. you know we what? Like chicken I, and how, how many years ago yeah. was that? This was in 2008 when he... Oh, he, Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, and honestly, yeah. that information is just not available to people. Like, it, it, like it's out there. It's it, it's published, but like your doctor's not going to tell you. Yeah. Like, doctors just don't focus on nutrition at all. Mm -hmm. um, in 2011, um, here, uh, our government health program, Medicare, started paying for uh, people to get uh, counseling or go through a, what's called intensive cardiac rehab and they do get information about like a academically plant-based diet but it's still it's still watered down a little bit to the point where it's not as effective as the kind of information that we give in the vegan health bundle like everything you get in a hospital is always going to be watered down and they're going to be like oh just you know they don't want to be unpopular <laughs> you know but it's it's just not Right. People will still go on to have heart attacks, unfortunately, like, you know, like if you have a bad heart disease, like like this artery here, you need to omit all cholesterol containing products, which is all plants. I mean, I'm sorry, all animals, animal products, fish, uh, eggs, uh, pork, chicken, all animal products contain cholesterol but we don't require any dietary cholesterol. So we want to eliminate all the cholesterol in our diet. Our liver will still make cholesterol. I mean, no one's worried because their cholesterol is too low, right? And then, and then your cholesterol level will drop. But um, in, in the bundle, I talk a great deal about what your cholesterol number should be, your total cholesterol and your LDL. And the numbers they really need to be are not what your doctor is telling you. The doctors usually say, 200 uh, for total cholesterol. That's way too high. Um, I have a bunch of videos about that. But um, yeah, in the American, uh, actually, the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology are slowly moving in our direction with uh, ACLM. 
um, to be coming stricter and stricter. And now they actually even recommend for optimal <laughs> cholesterol guidelines, which is like you don't want to have a heart attack. But basically, yeah, total cholesterol, we want to keep it below 150, not 200. Yeah. So that's to prevent heart attacks. Yeah. How, how do you convince your loved ones about this? Because I know at least two who like, they just don't want to listen and you know and what sick and they... you can do is like, honestly, sometimes like truly sit them down and have them watch my video. Like, like if they have heart disease, have them watch the you're as old as your arteries course. Um, and, and just, that's it. Like, don't, don't, make them do anything else just say like just give me two hours of your time it's important to me i want you to watch this and then at least they have the information and you know you did everything you could to give them the information to be clear some people will have the information i mean many people will have the information and will still not choose to go on a plant-based diet yeah. and you just got to wrap your head around that and it's it's really painful when it's someone that you love yeah. um but the best thing we can do is just give the information and then also like for someone like the reluctant spouse or whoever that doesn't want to change their diet if you you know and you can't force an adult to eat something they don't want to eat right i mean like if i could do yeah. that like my life would be so much easier but that's illegal so you can't tie people down and shove food they don't want in their mouth so the best thing you can do is just like make the yummiest plant-based food like i make like a lasagna yeah, with tofu ricotta it's really good like people that are not plant-based are like oh this is this is really good they don't mind eating it right so just try to get your loved one to just eat one of your plant-based dishes make it as yummy as possible i mean even if it's got like a lot of nuts and stuff it's better than what they're eating now and just see if you can like lure them over a little bit at a time just by getting them to like like one dish and then maybe they can try another dish and then slowly if they get fiber into their gut their taste buds will start to change and they'll start to like that food more but they're not going to ever like it until some goes down into their stomach just one time <laughs> so you got to start somewhere yeah because like um so far like my partner when I when I cook food for him, he'll just eat everything, right? But when he goes out to eat, I mean, I remember like at a birthday party, we were offered like deep fried tempeh. I, mm -hmm. I just put it onto my plate and then I threw it away. But he took it and he ate it and I kind of like freaked out. I'm like, why? And then he took a second piece and I'm like, no, stop, stop. So he, yep, he, he threw yep. the second piece away, yep. but not the first one. I know. So like, but I mean, like, honestly, like... <laughs> If you have zero health problems and like you get something every now and again when you're out, like you're probably going to be okay. And then you're eating healthy at home, you know, but like, yeah, it's really hard. And when you have serious health issues and it's really important that you address them, you just have to change your environment. Like you, you may have to just avoid these situations where you're you know, at an event where there's unhealthy food or whatever. Like, there's this we saying that Ayurvedic... We our own food there. I actually packed him food so that he wouldn't be eating the unhealthy food. But, it, you know, when the host comes to you and she's so happy that she brought you something plant-based, I guess I it's know. a bit hard. You know, she's like, I have tempeh for you. Right. And honestly, I would do the same thing. I would be like, oh, thank you. And then, like, I would, like, walk away. And then, yeah, like, I, I don't really ever try to be like, I mean, especially if someone made something just for you. I mean, if you're if you're gravely ill, like, yeah, you're going to have to say something. But, yeah, I mean, like, it, you just do the best you can. You don't want to, like, hurt people's feelings. But, yeah, sometimes. And, and if you are sick, you know, and you really have to be very strict, sometimes you just have to, like, tell people. You can say, my, this is a lie, usually, because your doctor doesn't know anything about plant-based nutrition, but just say, my doctor put me on this strict diet and I can't eat that food. It's doctor's yeah. orders. Sorry. And people, that makes sense to them. But yes. if you're like, I saw this thing on the internet, they'll think you're nuts. So don't say that. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> but you can always refer to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. This is a physician's specialty group that, with a sole purpose of reversing chronic disease mm. with, uh, with lifestyle changes, uh, predominantly a whole food plant-based diet. So there is an entire physician's group that will back you up. <laughs> okay, great, but also, great. I'll tell you also, in my course, in the bundle, um, in my uh, beginner part, like the where do you get your protein mm. uh, class, mm. I also mm. have an introductory section that has resources for your plant-based physician. Yeah, there you go. And um, and there's oh, actually a, yeah, a sheet that. that you can print off and you hand it to your doctor, your doctor that thinks that you're nuts for wanting to do a plant-based diet. And that sheet is going to show them all the information from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And they'll also get a 5.5 hour continuing medical education a course that they can take for free. And this means a lot because lots of times these courses for doctors cost like $500. This is free and they can learn everything about lifestyle medicine and plant-based nutrition and satisfy. They have to get, I mean, in the United States, they, they have to get so many credits of continuing education every year. And I believe this uh, is good internationally too. We have people all over the world that specialize in lifestyle medicine. So, um, yeah, that's a really good resource for your doctor. So your doctor knows that, like, you're not just a crazy person that saw something on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think just getting the bundle just for your course is already worth, worth the money. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, all this stuff is kind of second nature to me because I've done cardiology my whole life. And then when I learned the plant-based stuff, I all of a sudden – like knew exactly everything that we don't tell people. And so that's what's in the course is everything you're not going to learn in, from your regular doctor. I mean, sometimes there's, you might come across a plant-based doctor and we're all on the same mm. page, but, yeah. but um, yeah, lots of times. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm looking at a question here. Can your yes. yogurt with the woman's probiotic be eaten by men? Yeah. I don't think there's any problem with it being eaten by men and you can change around those probiotics if you want. But um, yeah, I just got that one uh, because it's, I guess I'm a woman and it's uh, useful, but, um, but yeah, I, I don't, it's, it's no problem at all to, for men to eat that. Yeah. Any other questions there? Uh, no other questions, but I have one yeah. last question um, mm -hmm. because um, so uh, I know this person who's trying to promote like healthier um, vegan food mm -hmm. in Malaysia. And um, so she gave me, you know, some of her patties to try and she asked me um, what I thought about it, you know, and I looked at the list of ingredients. I thought it was mainly great because it's, it was mainly whole food plant based except that the fact that it had oil in it. So the first mm -hmm. iteration had canola oil and I'm like, mm -hmm. no, don't put this what, in there. So, so what, then what? she put coconut oil, but she kept, even after I sent her like Dr. Esseltine's, yeah. you know, videos and all that, she's yeah. like, no, no, because they need it for the texture. And I was like, oh. So <laughs> here's the thing. I mean, like, first of all, like, yeah, I really, I would probably, go down to the mat on olive oil or on coconut oil. Coconut oil is 90% saturated fat. Coconut oil will really raise your cholesterol level. Um, yeah, like olive oil won't necessarily raise your cholesterol level, but it'll make your blood sludgy and stuff like that. Coconut oil you will skyrocket your cholesterol. Okay, it's really bad for you. Um, it just, you know, like it just depends on the context. She, the, <laughs> if it's like a restaurant, you know, that's like just trying to get more vegan food out there, they're right. Like Americans, certainly, I mean, probably everywhere around the world, people that are used to going to restaurants are simply not used to something cooked without oil. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have the education, they'll just say, I don't like this and they'll never go back, you mm -hmm. know? So even having, you know, vegan food with some oil is better than having meat and it's hard yeah. once you kind of get to where we are in this whole food plant-based world to remember back to what it was like before you were plant-based you know and like a lot of people think like oh well it just won't taste good i mean even if they have oil it's it's way better than meat and dairy and the crucial thing for environmental reasons we have to get 
we have to find substitutes for all this meat. Like we are going to destroy the planet. But 75% of our farmland of the globe goes to meat production, to raising grain for cows. So um, it, like, for example, Impossible Burgers and Beyond Burgers, like I, I would never eat those. Mm. I think they're disgusting and they're full of coconut oil, but they have their place. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're important, like they're yeah. important for environmental reasons. And I, I think the guy that invented the Impossible Burger is is a wonderful person. And he's right. Like not only a small portion of the public is is really going to convert over to a whole food plant based, no oil diet. That's like I come from the real world and that's just the way it is. But, um, you know, it's it's every every step in a plant based direction is is good for you. Um, yeah. Even if you're well, eating when, an impossible it, burger is still better than a beef burger. Okay. Even though it's got. They, they yeah. market it as, you know, wholesome, healthy food. When Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, it's healthy. So, I guess it's a spectrum. It's healthier. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like you're never going to yeah. like. But honestly, in, in the general public and in the medical field, they can't even comprehend the idea of reversing chronic disease like they just assume it'll never go away you know like it's it's not yeah. like i never knew that you could reverse diabetes uh like seven years ago i had no idea that that was yeah. possible because I, I, so I come from, from the medical field you will never hear that and um yeah so i mean that's the thing like we really need to drastically change eating patterns worldwide. Um, like, I don't think that like meat will ever be illegal. And I kind of don't think it should be, but we need to undo all these like concentrated animal feeding operations. Like if you're going to raise meat and eat meat, it needs to be on very small family farms, you know, like in a lot of Asian countries, I know like people just have chickens in their yard and they might eat yeah. the chickens. Like that yeah. that seems reasonable to me, but um, we the way we do meat here. I mean, I mean yeah. it's awful. I mean we yeah. we grow in Arkansas where I am in the South. We um, we're the, soy is our number one product and our agricultural export, and um, it, it just mostly goes to feed all the cows. And mm -hmm. um, so anyway, it's it is very useful to have Impossible Burgers, to have Beyond Burgers. Um, anything, even to have, you know, like whatever, uh, an egg roll with oil. If you can get people to stop eating meat, like that is the, that has value in and of itself. And frequently transitioning to a healthier direction is just kind of a years long process for a lot of people. Um, people have different personalities and there's some like chef aj is a black and white hardcore personality <laughs> as soon as she figured out like i told her that when i was on her i'm like most people are just not going to be as like flawless as chef aj is uh, and that's great if you are but a lot of people just have to wrap their heads around this and they'll try a little bit of food like if someone hands them a plant-based or a vegan meal they'll try it and then they'll get a little bit more used to it and then they might try it again and that's that's how we will get the majority of people to change their diets is just a little bit at a time a baby step at a time yeah do do you think that um chocolate and there was there was something that confused me a bit is chocolate considered as like you know unsweetened let's say unsweetened chocolate chips is that considered as oil free because when i look at the ingredients for the chocolate chips there's cocoa butter okay. so isn't that oil so cocoa butter is not butter cocoa butter is um if you know like apple butter like it's not butter it's it's like just whipped up apples basically okay. cocoa butter is it, it is a saturated fat and it's from the cocoa bean but it's 100 percent vegan cocoa butter is vegan okay yes. is cocoa butter good for you no, if you have diabetes, heart disease, you know, if, if you have no health problems, sure, go for it. But um, chocolate uh, has a good bit of saturated fat in it. So plants, 
only animals have cholesterol. Plants don't have any cholesterol, mm -hmm. but fatty plants have saturated fat. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. saturated fat is the worst kind of fat for insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to prevent you the most from like making progress. So what I recommend is um, like, instead of, if, if you are diabetic, if you have heart disease, instead of chocolate, have a chocolate flavored thing, right? Mm. You can get yeah. like cocoa powder. You can yeah. make brownies with cocoa powder. It tastes chocolatey, but yeah. just leave off the literal chocolate with the cocoa butter and, and use cocoa powder. Like I make like a, like hot chocolate. I just get soy milk and um, cocoa powder. Like I get, uh, what's it called? Like raw cacao powder Yes. and yeah. like a little maple syrup, mix up a slurry, add my soy milk and I have hot chocolate. Like, and it satisfies my chocolate sweet tooth. But, mm. um, but I mean, like I eat chocolate sometimes, but I try to <laughs> limit it because, okay. you know, like, trust me. Yeah, like, because we all... I, used, I used to make chocolate from scratch. And you basically, oh, yeah. see, you basically use cacao, uh, raw, so cacao powder and then cacao butter and then a sweetener. And, and now, so I still have blocks of cacao butter with me because I, I'm yeah. oil free and I'm like, I don't want to make this anymore, but now I don't know so, what to do with it. And then, yeah. I mean, yeah. it just, it just depends. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just looking at you. You look young and healthy. <laughs> I mean, a, a young, healthy person can, can have some chocolate and you'll be fine if, if you're not diabetic, you know, Yeah. but, um, but, but like, I, don't I work a lot it with and give it to people. I feel really bad because I'm, I feel like, Oh, I'm not giving you healthy food, you know, because they all think my food is healthy. Right. And then once I put like the, yeah. the cacao butter, and well, everything. you know, if people like they just have to get a little bit more education. Like honestly, the best thing you can do as a chef is rope people in with yummy food. That's pretty good. You know, like if we remove every bit of like <laughs> it's the, we got two scenarios. Like if I have patients that will like maybe like I do uh, coaching or like you can yeah. on my website you can book a, a consultation session with me. And I have people that come to me. They're sick. Like a lot of them have heart problems and they want to know exactly like they're they are seeking me out to find out exactly what they should do well i'm going to tell them yeah. exactly the right thing to do but if yeah. you're like at a party and everyone's having barbecue and you're like well i've got this vegan thing with some chocolate on it like yeah mm -hmm. do the chocolate like if you can get them to like your food even right. though it's got chocolate it, it's you got to remember the like otherwise they're just going to be eating like fried pork I, rinds or something exactly. you know yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. baby steps yeah. in that direction. Yeah. Oh, we have one more question, and then I got to go because I got another live in yeah. ten minutes. Um, Denise Lindayan asks, "What about to put oil on the skin?" So I'm oh, guessing, it's fine. I'm guessing, like, fine it's to put oil on your skin. Yeah. yeah, coconut oil is great on your skin, just not down your mouth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to affect your arteries or anything on your skin. It's great for your skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, there was another question, but I don't understand what it means. It says cocoa oil sivas for diabetes. I'm not sure what. Is, is coconut oil what? I don't know. It says C-S-I-V-A-S. So I don't know what is. I, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Coconut oil mean. is terrible for diabetes, to be clear. Okay. You can put it on your skin, but don't let it go in your mouth. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, Thank coconut you, oil is really high in saturated fat. Yeah, just avoid it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think we'll need to wrap up now because I have another live in nine minutes. But thank oh, yeah. you so much. This is yeah. this is so useful and helpful and insightful. And um I think the next time anybody asks me why no oil, I'll, I'll just point them to this video. Um, yeah, point them to and, this video and I do little videos about like, I have a YouTube channel, a Facebook page and Instagram. Yeah. Everything is natural state plant based. And I do just like short little snippets about why you should do this information. You're not going to get from your doctor probably. Yeah. So you guys can also check out, um, you know, Stephanie's website as well, but yeah, check out the link in either one of our bios because, um, that's where you're going to get, you know, this amazing he vegan health bundle. Like we said, you know, all the recipes are oil free, but it's not just um, recipes. There's also things on workouts, there's um, mindset, mm -hmm. there's yoga, and um, there's lots of um, good information courses from doctors as well. And there's also Stephanie's course. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if you guys are watching the replay and you have any questions, just please um, leave it um, in the comments below, and either Snafi and I will yeah. um, reply you. And um, yeah, thanks yeah. again, Snafi. Yeah, and people thanks everyone. can message me on my website to naturalstatepointbase.com. You can type in a question and it'll go to me. So. Yeah, and Suryati says awesome live session. Thank you. So All yeah, right. thank you. Thanks so All much, right. Stephanie. Right. Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Bye -bye. everyone. Bye. Y'all take care. Take care.